the best we're gonna get, I think, out here. <laughs> Three years ago, I found van life on YouTube, and I just did nothing for that year that I owned my apartment other than watch YouTube videos about van life, how to build a van, how to travel, how to do it as a solo female, how to do it with a partner, how to how to cook, how to dump your pee, like everything. And this just tucks hooks into here. And this is my nature's head composting toilet. And yeah, this whole design with this becoming the couch and then the bathroom was uh, from something on YouTube. Boondocking is rolling to a place and having absolutely no amenities other than what you bring and what you take out. So it's very much pack in, pack out. We aren't given any of the amenities like water, like, you know, electricity or things like that. We are expected to bring them ourselves or just go without. And so our bus, we have solar on the roof, so we're running electricity. We have a battery bank that fuels all of our electric needs. Uh, we have heat and we have I, like I've said before, 150 gallons of water, so I know for at least two weeks we're cool and we don't have to worry about it. Um, but boondocking is, is just being where you are without, you know, having the modern convenience of a hookup. You never know what to expect. You're constantly living on the edge in a good way, in a way that um, whatever you have to face that day, it's it's gonna find you and you can't get away from it. You are never bored and you're always living spontaneously. You're also learning to trust yourself. And I think it's a little bit of a journey of self-discovery. You never really know who you are until you have to wake up and there's a plumbing leak or you know something is not working and you're in the middle of a national forest and there's no service for miles and you're really alone and you have to figure it out so i really love the the way it allows me to constantly be connected and grounded to who i am i do find that it's a privilege to have the option of choosing this kind of life choosing the freedom versus you know some of the people who really don't have that option so i find it to be a lot of gratitude from that experience. Yeah, you kind of get two inflections. You get you're living in a van and you get you're living in a van. Like <laughs> you get either side of it. Um, so I don't think it's for everybody. I don't think this is like the happiest way to live. And if you're not doing it, you never took a chance. Like, I don't think that's the case. I think you need to ask yourself, as we all do, what are my priorities? Um, and how can I fulfill those priorities in a realistic way? Um, so if you want to live in a van, if you think that this is going to align with what makes you happy and your lifestyle and your finances and, you know, your peace of mind and your career, then, then go for it. The van's name is Patience and that is a quality that I really struggle with as a person. Um, I, I just grew up, I'm a child of immigrants, we moved here with nothing and without a language, we didn't know anything, so I started working when I was 13 full time and I never stopped. I have grew up so quickly that I was really never, I've never had the chance to really like play and just be and like feel, like like I'm, I'm allowed to do that, like I'm allowed to be, to, to relax and this is all news to me, this wasn't part of my lifestyle when I lived in the city, this never happened um, and so that was probably the biggest takeaway, it's learning, it's teaching me to slow down. We slide these together, sorry baby. And that's a bed. This is my clothing cabinet. So I keep all my clothes. I roll now. Um, I can get rid of half of these, honestly. I have just what I need here. Like I have this little basket of music, which is fun to have, but everything else is in the iPad. And I have all my instruments. I have a melodica, I have my stand, I have my piccolo. Like it feels really good that I have, I, I use what I have. I'm a freelance musician. I was working in New York City as a freelance flutist and music director and teaching private lessons. So now I teach private lessons from the road and create my own performance opportunities. I'm building a brand, Flutist of the Van, around this. One, two, ready, play. You know, I was struggling in New York. I was being a New Yorker, hustling, trying to break into the freelance scene in New York, and it wasn't really making me happy. I wasn't finding a sense of community there. And I think since I've left, uh, COVID kind of gave me the 
kick in the butt to abandon things because there's really nothing to abandon at this point because there's nothing going on. But um, I'm out here and I've taken my career into my own hands and I'm not just fitting who I am into what the scene is in New York. I'm instead looking at myself and what makes me happy, cooking, playing music, traveling, meeting people, being inspiring, like all that makes me happy. And now I'm building a career that can put those all together. So for my career, it's changed everything. There you go. I've accepted a position out here in November of 2019. I'm a radiation therapist at one of the main hospitals. I'm a musician by trade as well. Back in Michigan, I was a professional musician playing, you know, 300 shows a year. My wife cuts hair. She's a cosmetologist. So um, we would have been, you know, other words, just absolutely SOL with, you know, up the creek without a paddle, as some might say. Um, but. We moved down here in just the nick of time, right? You know, just a couple months before, and it was, I didn't have any like preconceived notion or any premonition. We just happened to work out, and I couldn't have been in a better spot to be rent free, to have your house with you, and be in a position where you can, you know, make the most of it. Yeah, a lot of people are stuck inside, but we're outside and experiencing, you know, nature's wonder out here by ourselves, social distancing, you know, and having the time of our lives doing it. I was tied down to a place, to a job, to, you know, a community. And those things made me happy until they didn't anymore. And so um, freedom became my passion. Walking around Ocean Beach, California, San Diego, and I saw all these nomads and they were like modern day hippies. They would gather every night at sunset and, um, you know, make campfires right on the beach and play banjos on top of their buses and vans and they all lived in this really cool rigs and I just thought, why not, you know? It's an induction stove, we put it up here on the countertop. This is our sink, hopefully no dirty dishes. We did our own plumbing and we had a few leaks but we fixed that, so that's really cool. It also doubles as a shower, if you turn it this way, this thing pulls out and you can actually take a shower outside. People assume things that they don't have any information otherwise. They assume that uh, we're broke or that we're some sort of um, moochers or things like, yeah, it's just, it's very weird. A lot of things in this life aren't easy. You know, it's glamorized all over the internet. People are like, I want to live in a bus. And it's like, that's a lot more difficult than that, but it's not like, I'm, I don't want to make it sound like it's impossible. But there's little extra steps, you know, you have, I, I have different things I have to pay attention to. I have a water switch that I need to turn on before, you know, and make sure it's on before I can use my water. And then, I, you know, I got a little steps here and there. It's not just as easy as going into your house and just leaving that faucet running because I know I only have 150 gallons of water and every drop counts. Every drop of, of diesel counts, every drop of water counts. Um, it's something that makes living tiny difficult but in the grand scheme of things it makes it worth it the sunsets are gorgeous out here like that perfect color molds too yeah it gets quiet too that's what i like the most i have a community out here i have really good friends and i meet people all the time and that part of my soul is nourished so I would say what's changed for me is just that I'm, I'm fulfilled. Loneliness is something that is a misconception that we have to overcome. You're never lonely. I mean, there's always another van on the parking lot somewhere a couple of miles away. There's always a city to go to. I'm always a Zoom call away from my family or my friends. Um, but it's definitely amazing to have that time for yourself, to be selfish with your time, to be able to like reflect and go within and figure out who you are. Who, who is this woman? There are days where I can't imagine myself living in any other thing, you know? I can't imagine myself in a house. And then there are days where, you know, I'm like, okay, the expiration date's on this some sometime, but there's not a definitive, uh, you know, timeline going. It changes with the wind, so. But it's nice to have a place that you can call home and have such a homey feeling. You know, this is the actual first place my wife and I have lived um, together 
after we've been married that has been home. You know, every other place was just like, this is our house. And we have our things are in here, but it didn't give us a sense of like, oh my God, this is my place. And so where do you want to go? You know, you've got these, all these places that you've only heard about or only read about and you've never visited them. And um, there's no way to really truly understand it until you go to those places.